So I think I'll use the chair. It looks comfy. Um, Hi, how are you doing? Yeah. Everybody's in the back. It seems to be a little bit far away. So, um, yeah, um, I'm here to talk about, uh, about uh, how to approach a role to profiling. Um, I work for, uh, as uh, the presenter said, uh, in, uh, in Norway. Uh, we are a coffee bar chain of uh, 45 coffee shops in, in Norway. Um, we also run our own uh, bakery and, of course, of course our own uh, roasting business and import. Uh, we roast on a 35 kilo lowering uh, roaster and I have a couple of Ikawa sample roasters. So I'm here today because I was invited uh, to talk about roast profiling, but I'm a bit curious about whom, who I'm speaking to. Um, are there any uh, roasters listening in now? Yeah, a couple, good. Uh, anyone else with uh, an experience with coffee roasting? Like briefly, no? Okay, so for, uh, for some of you, this may be uh, relatively uh, familiar, but for hopefully, um, I might give you some fresh ideas uh, about the, the subject. And also a little disclaimer, uh, this will be a short and opinionated presentation, so be warned. Yeah, that's what you're gonna get. So first slide, there you go. Uh, so uh, what is a roast profiling? Uh, I have borrowed the definition here from um, the extant resource pages of an American company called Sweet Maria's. Uh, I'm guessing you all can read it, so I'm not going to read it out loud. Uh, my only comment would be that um, uh, you're not really manipulating uh, the curve itself, but you are uh, manipulating what generates the data that draws the curve, which is, a, is an important difference. And it's also the key point I think I'm going to cover today. Um, the spread of the idea of, of this type of, of, of roasting, or rather uh, how, you, how you view your roast um, of roast profiles, this had been uh, fueled um, very much by the software company uh, Craftser. Uh, um, so it's taking it away from the awkward Excel spreadsheets to a sleek automated uh, data collection. So that generates a like, nice little graph that you can see uh, as it happens. We also use the Craftser uh, software for this. So yeah, oh, yeah, in front of me, that's right. Uh, so the curve or the plot is visualizing the change in temperature registered by one of or more thermometers on your roaster over a period of time. On our roaster, we have like three probes. Uh, it's inlet uh, temperature, product temperature, and exhaust temperature. Uh, some people uh, use the term to describe the flavor or style of coffee. This is not what I'm going to uh, present for you today. This is about the actual uh, roasting. Uh, and the curve is also is, is, the, is the actual visualization of these data points um, mentioned above. What uh, in the past was uh, the most common descriptor of a roast, profile, of a roast namely the degree, um, is simply the end point of the roast profile. It's at the temperature uh, and time you stop the roasting and then cool the beans. So this has been referred to as roast degree or roast level, uh, you know, in the past, it still is. Some call it city or full city, AKA charcoal in my way. And so why is roast profiling important? Uh, roasting well, is difficult. Um, roasting well and consistently is even more so. So roasting is basically trying to control and mold a series of complex uh, chemical reactions occurring as you apply heat to the dried coffee bean. Sorry for reading this, it's just, uh, it, is, it helps. Uh, so knowing what you're doing um, and the effect it has on your coffee is, is very important and this helps in that sense. Uh, it also, um, when you're logging these data points, you're creating a profile or like a path that you can follow next time around for the same coffee. Uh, and, and it will help you uh, maintain the same uh, roast over and over again. So it gives you the, uh, stability and is easier to, uh, to do it uh, consistently the same, the same way. 
And uh, if something happens, you know, knock, knock wood, uh, during the roast that wasn't intended, it will be easy to go back to see what happened and to track uh, your profile. Uh, also, if you pick up something in the other part of the quality control chain that you uh, didn't see during the roasting, you can go back and have a look at the profile you did, and we will maybe may be able to see and to analyze the curve to see what you need to change to, uh, to do it better or to avoid in the future. Uh, roast profiling terms and abbreviations has uh, quickly become a language of its own. It's spoken by, uh, by many roasters, even though not everybody knows what they're talking about. <laughs> it makes roasters regard the process of roasting as the set of complex chemical reactions that it actually is. Um, however, just to speak the language doesn't really mean that you know uh, and control the process better. Uh, it simply means you have learned the name of the terms. So the graphs and plots are also really nice tools uh, to help visualize what's going on. So how to start using rules profiling, if you're not already doing, of course. First of all, you need to, well, I, I, this is taking that you're actually already roasting and not starting a new business, but if you're already roasting, uh, you need to log all the things that you're currently doing and make sure that you have the data uh, uh, with you, and then you will be able to, uh, you know, generate a new profiles based on what you were doing in the past. And this will give you an overview of, of what you're doing today, and um, it will be a starting point for your uh, growth profile uh, moving onward. Second, you need to find out what what are you really roasting. Uh, what, Beasts are you facing? You need to check like physical attributes like uh, moisture density and uh, and so forth. And you know you need to know bean type and uh, processing, all the details that you can uncover to, that may affect uh, how you should roast this coffee. Uh, then you need to go uh, to find out the flavor potential of the coffee, which is really important, of course. This means that you need to sample roast. Um, and and uh, generate curves from this. Uh, some of you are using like Ikawas or other uh, automated uh, sample roasters. Uh, for all the other of you that might be using a ProBat or similar, it still can be um, a, a good tool. So um, we use uh, a method that we have um, a several different roast profiles on a Ikawa roaster. Um, and I roast the same coffee in several different ways just to see what kind of coffee and what flavor potential is there. And this will help me generate the roast profile for the, for the big roaster. This is also a, a, a topic I will dis be discussing tomorrow in the workshop and the cupping. It's also worth keeping in mind uh, that uh, how the coffee will be consumed, you know, if it's for espresso, if it's for um, uh, like a filter brew or something similar. Um, are your clients, you know, brewing this uh, in a French press? It's different. Uh, there are many ways to take uh, things to take into account. For us, uh, we know that in our shops, we are mostly doing uh, or we're doing um, batch filter brews, which has been um, how we have adapted our roast profiles to, to match this um, way of brewing, because this is how the clients are actually going to taste it, your coffees, uh, not in a cupping bowl uh, or, or in the lab. So this is also very important uh, to take you into account. So then you have uh, tasted the coffee, you have seen what profiles uh, or what um, uh, flavor potential is there, and you need to uh, start uh, test roasting your coffee. So you, 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 you want to build a profile to roast your coffee after. Since you've already done this with your previous roasts, if you're new to roast profiling, then you will uh, start using one of the curves that you feel might be suitable. And um, then you come back and test what you've, uh, what you've done. And so it's about doing these things, uh, cupping again, coming back to uh, what you did and, 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 and re redo your profile uh, accordingly. Sometimes you need to uh, prolong uh, the actual roasting, make it slightly uh, longer development time or, or similar. So it's like, a, as you do with a, it says on a conditioner bottle, like a rinse and repeat. So it's like roast and cup and roast and cup. 
Ja. So, uh, uh, benefits of the roast profiling uh, uh, way of, of roasting. It's, uh, it's an increased uh, ability of achieving the same roast quality and style for every batch. You, know, you want to have consistently high quality, not just uh, a varying degree of roast or uh, a coffee tasting, a good one day and a bad the next. So, it it's will be uh, a higher degree of repeatability in your roasts. It also um, highlights how the flavor of the coffee is affected by more than the end point, more than the actual uh, roast degree. It is also um, the curve. And the curve, I often describe this in, uh, in uh, lectures uh, as going to a, a trip to the mountain. So how up the mountain you're going is the degree of the roast. And what uh, route you're taking there, if you're climbing the 19 degree north face, or if you're walking the path up, or you're taking a cable car, this is the rules profile, and it will affect the flavor or the, how, how you perceive the trip. So the, 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 the roast degree is, is certain, just one part of the actual um, uh, flavor. Uh, and um, so, sorry. And you know, it also visualizes the change in, uh, in temperature and time during the roast, and, and it will act as a guide. You know, as I said before, it will give you an idea while you're roasting to see if you're on track to, uh, to, uh, to make the same coffee roast the same way uh, over and over. And also, again, it's, it's, it's about being aware of, of uh, uh, roasting is actually a really complex chemical uh, uh, reaction, and, and you should view it as such, not, not simply a roast degree or a, a sound that the bean is cracking. So it's, there's all these things that you, uh, you become more aware of if you're using a roast profile, rather than just looking at the beans uh, while you're roasting. But there are problems, you know, there's always uh, gonna be problems and, and many are guilty of looking at the graphs and numbers, then then looks to the focus of the quality uh, or the coffee itself rather, you're looking at the screen not the coffee. You, know, you see those beautiful curves and colors and all these things happening and you kind of are mesmerized and you forget about what you're actually doing. You know, the, the, the visual noise itself is, is, is mind-boggling and a lot of people just, uh, just focus on this, on their um, uh, the roasting of coffee and maybe they're not even thinking so much about the coffee uh, afterwards. It, look, it looked good on the curve and they don't cup it after. So that's uh, one problem of, of roast profiling. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's also very easy to forget that these curves that is generated by data is just a representation of these data, you know, and it's the urge many people have is to make the, the curves more visually pleasing, just in, in hindsight, just ever so slightly tweaking them. And, and you know, it will actually be a, a, a deviation from what you should be doing because it's, it's, uh, it's, it's not the curve that's uh, important, it's, it's the coffee in the end. Um, uh, and also, you have such, um, we have a tool that's really uh, accurate, but it's also very inaccurate, that you measure the development time in seconds, like the time from where here the first crack until um, you drop the beans, which is the development time. And this is based on, on uh, often inaudible or barely audible start of the first crack. Some machine like our lowering, it's really hard to hear first crack. And so you have to really pay attention. So from one roaster to the next, the actual uh, hearing the first crack could be different if within the same roast. So you have a really accurate endpoint, but not so accurate uh, start point for this phase. And, and people measure this in, in seconds and abide by it as a dogma. And also there's a, a phase people call uh, yellowing phase. It's also really uh, object, uh, subjectively um, uh, noted down. So these things will, will um, be stuff that people talk a lot about during uh, uh, when I talk about roast profiling. I find them some uh, times very uh, inaccurate that you actually, you, you're fooling yourself into thinking that you're in control. So that's uh, one, one uh, really uh, uh, big pitfall right there. And also I feel that this could be a crutch for many of these terms, you know, knowing the term and focusing and talking a lot about it kind of it hides the fact that you're not really sure uh, what you're doing in the first place. If you're new to uh, roasting, it's something that you're easily picking up on, knowing to talk about all these uh, abbreviations and, and it, it feels safe, but 
you're not really knowing what you're, you're actually talking about. Also one back. So um, I want to talk, let you know how we do it at Café Brenneria. So uh, as previously described, um, we, uh, we try to find out as much as we can about the physical attributes. We, we check the moisture content, we check the density, uh, water activity of the coffee. Of course, we also know the processing, the, the altitude and the, and the bean variety in the, in the coffee. Uh, we also look at maybe we had this coffee in the past. So these things we'll be looking at when we are looking for the profiles using the profiling tool. And also we look at how the coffee will, will be brewed. As I told you, we have um, mostly with like 80% of the, of the coffee, co coffee consumption is, is filter brew. And uh, if I'm roasting a coffee that tastes the best as a cupping cup, I'm missing the point because I want it to taste for the customer, not for me, uh, the best. So we also, when we are uh, roasting, we, we first, when we do the profile, we test it as a filter brew uh, before we find the profile. And then after we will cup it to make sure it's uh, uh, continuously that way. And we then find the suitable uh, roast profiles. Maybe, as I said, we've done it before, or we had a similar uh, density level, maybe a similar variety from a similar um, area in the country. And then we'll uh, roast three or more different profiles on our, our Ikawa roasters, our sample roasters, to try to pry out what the uh, coffee could be um, capable of, uh, of tasting. There's, uh, there's always uh, easy to make one uh, like a perfect roast that you think will be the one for the coffee, but then you might miss some points that could have been highlighted have you treated it differently. So we do um, three or more uh, different profiles on our uh, sample roasters to see if there's uh, things that we would be missing from uh, what we, uh, we think the coffee should be like. And based on this, we'll uh, go back and then uh, um, generate a profile that we will be uh, doing for the production roasting. Um, and after this, we roast the full-scale batch, and then we will see how the machine performs. Sometimes we have uh, a coffee that's so dense that the machine, or coal, and that the machine uh, works really hard to keep up, or you have to pull it 100% all the time to, man to, to keep the, um, the profile, to, to, to hit the, the curve. And this is um, something that we should note and maybe uh, change, because this will uh, be a problem over time. And so we then maybe um, uh, change the profile because of this. Uh, and then after cupping it, uh, we we'll might change the profile um, again if it's not to, uh, to the, the, the flavor that we were looking for from our sample roasts. And then we uh, see what uh, uh, this method brings out to us. And then we'll, uh, we'll go back and, and roast another roast um, should the, the, the machine uh, not be capable doing the first uh, roast profile that we did. And uh, if you have a profile that's, that's uh, hard for the machine to, produ to reproduce, it's all often to do with uh, uh, a temperature of uh, the product when it's going in, or it may be, um, again, it's, it's, the, it's the density of the bean or the moisture content that will affect your roaster. The key for us, though, is always uh, that we base our decisions and tastings uh, on tasting and testing the coffee rather than the, the graphs and plots, which is you know the, the basics of, of how I see the roast profiling tool should be used. Um, it's it's a it's a very uh, enticing tool. It's been uh, more and more uh, absorbed in the coffee roasting industry, but it's it's it's, it's uh, to me it's it's leaving a lot of people. Um, blind for what you actually are, are, are doing. So as I said, short and sweet, uh, I hope this was interesting for you. Uh, and I thought maybe there were some questions that you wanted to uh, ask from the, from the lecture. Yeah, I think I see one hand up. Hello, uh, you mentioned that you check the moisture density before you start roasting, yep. which I do as well. And I'm just curious, um, how do you roast differently if it's a high density coffee versus a low density coffee? 
Could you repeat the last part? How do you roast differently if it's a high density coffee versus a low density coffee? Well, so um, based on that, we're doing this Nordic style of roasting. We are always looking for, um, we like acidity in coffees, um, but if it's a high density coffee, we, we always uh, uh, put more heat into the start of the roast profile to make sure that we, um, we get a good uh, uh, turning point uh, and also to get it to dry out uh, the way we want. So there are prob you know, high density coffees, depending what we're looking for in flavor, but normally we would give it a lot of heat uh, and in, in the beginning and the part of, uh, of and the turning point and the drying phase of the coffees. And probably shorter profiles as well. This, this, is, this is something we look for. Um, if you wanted to have a little bit more like a lime or, or citrusy acidity, we don't believe in roasting the coffees through and through, like completely brown all the way through. Maybe the different shades of brown uh, will highlight different flavors. So you have the outside of the bean be more caramelized, whilst the still the inside of the bean has a lighter a hue of brown, which might um, you get the sweetness of the caramelized sugars as well. Some acidity that's not been roasted away from the interior of the bean. And you would get that from the shorter roast time is what you're saying? Yeah, the shorter roast time, also the uh, heat apply in the beginning, which, you know, a lot of heat in the early part of the roast will um, make the development time quicker. And so it's, it's something to do with it. The, um, uh, both of the, uh, the, the, the heat in the beginning, also the, the quicker development time in the end. But generally, uh, a, a lighter, uh, a, a lower temperature for the end point will, 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 will be like this. Anyone else? Sure. Gracias. Eh, don Ola, los exportadores de café. Sí. Oh, this, this. Yeah. Gracias, Don Ola. Sí. Eh, los exportadores de café presentamos los cafés, bien sea en malla 14 hacia arriba o preparación europea, que es malla 15, 16 o en Supremo, que es malla 16, 17, 18. Quisiera preguntarle a usted, como tostador en Europa, en Noruega, si existe alguna preferencia o alguna ventaja de presentar los cafés con, eh, de, con densimetrías separadas, separando los granos superiores o las mallas superiores de las inferiores, o si vale la pena tener los cafés presentados en malla 14 hacia arriba full. Gracias. So, <clears throat> this didn't work. <laughs> Necesita traducción, tra translation? Do you have a translation? I can. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, the question quickly is, 14 screen full or versus uh, 15 screen full versus Supremo uh, and separation of screens for a roaster company like yours? Well, this is interesting because um, what's most important we find is, is, is spread of, of screen size, not necessarily screen size in itself. We have a project in, in Costa Rica where we buy something called Petit Bean, which is like 14 down, uh, which is, uh, is pea berries and smaller um, beans, and it's to do with slower ripeness. This is, this is really nice. Um, but um, as a general idea, I think, if you're talking about screen size, I think the screen size is um, less important uh, than the actual spread of the screen size, if you get what I mean. So uh, a bean that would be um, uh, naturally bigger, it's like, because, you know, you have the pacamaras and you have uh, mochas, you know, it will be uh, it will be very different. But the, the big problem would be if you have a spread of screen size of the, of the same coffee bean, um, which is going to be harder to get even roast. The, the smaller ones are going to be finished faster and the, the, the bigger ones are going to be slower to roast. So you will have a, a Quakers and uh, or yeah. So that's the most important part. So I, I personally don't really believe a lot in, in the Supremo Excel. So the size, uh, we have a double A or AB in Kenya and other places. The most important part is, is, is the spread. Question?
Hello, thank you. Um, I wanted to ask you, how do you address when you have to, or how do you approach when you have to roast uh, a blend of coffee, especially when uh, the individual coffees have different uh, roasting curves? Uh, in my experience, uh, for us, it's been a lot of uh, trial and error because uh, it, it doesn't it doesn't roast well in neither of the curves. So I wanted to ask you for your approach. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, well, in our current company where I'm working now, we don't roast blends at all. Uh, but in my previous jobs, we were um, uh, uh, post roast blending. Um, certain beans you could roast together, uh, it will work well, but um, for a roast blend, or yeah, that's, it's, it's hard to get them all evenly roasted. And I would highly recommend, if you have the possibility, to, to blend it after um, at least the, uh, some of the components. Maybe you have two different naturals that you could roast uh, at the same time or uh, some washed, you know, depending on, on the origin and density. But yeah, I would first measure density and, and, and uh, then decide whether to roast components by themselves or, or uh, together. Thank you. Yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for listening.